Welcome to Healthy Eating. I'm here at the farmer's markets with my favourite lamb supplier from Merrill Creek, Sam. Can you tell me a little bit about Merrill Creek and your philosophy? We're all very free range, natural pastures, trying to run lambs as naturally in and as open space as possible so that you're getting that really authentic traditional flavour. People say to us all the time, I haven't tasted lamb like this since I used to visit my grandparents when I was a child. So what are the sort of cuts that are favourite? What's your, your best sellers and what do you use them for? Now being winter, it's nice and chilly. People are really looking for the comfort food. So we're selling lots of things like the shanks, shoulders, anything that's for slow cooking, braising. Okay, well I'm going to cook a nice winter slow cook. So do you reckon a four quarter fill or something like that? Absolutely. If you're doing a slow cook, you want to use something that comes from the front of the animal is rule of thumb. This is the eye of the shoulder, which is just a nice little fillet that runs through the middle of the shoulder, as it says, and it just cooks beautifully. The longer you cook it, the more it melts, the more it falls apart. So if you're doing any sort of curry, stew, tagine, it's absolutely perfect for that. All right, well, I'll get a few of those. Thanks very Sounds much. Sounds good. Today we're going to do a nice winter slow cook with some seasonal vegetables. So I've got here some four quarter fillet of lamb, beautiful Merrill Creek lamb, pastoral fed, always the best stuff. So I'm just going to cut up in some rough chunks. We're going to cook it for a fairly long time and it will break down. If they're too small, it'll just disintegrate into nothing really. Bit of salt and then what we're going to do now is just going to brown it off in the pot. The trick with the pots is you have to get a sturdy, heavy duty cast iron pot. All we're going to do is just take the meat and start browning it off. Seal the meat. And while that's doing there, what we'll do is we'll get the spice mix I'm going to make with this. Give it a nice bit of flavour. I've toasted it off just in a pan. Some cumin seed, some mustard seed, fennel, caraway seed. So just put that in a more of a pestle. Got here a little bit of Szechuan pepper, add a little bit of smoked paprika. It's just beautiful, add a nice beautiful depth of flavour into your dish. Bit of salt and I'm just going to grind this up here nicely. Just check out the meat, see how that's going. It's browning nicely. So I'm just going to take it off the heat. Perfect. The spice mix is done. What we're going to do is add our vegetables. Just give this onion a rough dice, it doesn't have to be too fine. Get a nice celery. Just split him down the middle. Give him a rough chop. Put all these together because we're going to cook all these at the same time. Put it in the one pot. And a carrot. Chop it up in circles. There we go, that's our veggie base. We will put this in the pot, nice hot pot as it's going. Cook this down. That they start to caramelise a little bit and, get, and let the natural sugars start coming out and give a nice little bit of flavour. Now I'm just getting a bit of garlic and ginger with this, which I'm, I'm going to add to my spices. Don't have to cut them roughly because we're going to pound them together. It's going to be a nice flavouring base to add to our to vegetables and then add to our meat. It's got some nice olive oil, lemon juice. So just give this a, a little bit of a pound. Check out how the veggies are going. Just the onions, starting to, the celery all starting to soften up really nicely here. Flavouring's ready to go. Add that now to our veggies. You see it's starting to colour at the bottom of the pot there. Just got a little bit of red wine here, which I'm just going to use to deglaze it and add beautiful flavour to it. Just helps the, the meat and the cooking process. It's got some tomatoes. You can just use tin tomatoes or fresh tomatoes, whatever you like. Nice little base there going. All right, now it's time to add the meat back. Get it nice and submerged. Just gonna season it a little bit with some salt. And I've got some dried oregano here too. Turn it down to a really low, gentle simmer. Put a lid on it. We've got plenty of time now to get ready for what we're gonna serve it with. I'm gonna make some homemade pasta. I'm gonna make spelt pasta using the spelt wheat, which is an ancient form of wheat. It's easy to digest because the gluten in it is actually water soluble. Now to make pasta, basically, I've got 200 grams of spelt flour here. Now I'm just gonna put it in a food processor. For 100 grams, you add one egg. Two eggs in there, just a little bit of olive oil in the food processor. Okay, that's come together nicely there. And let's just wrap it just in a bit of cling wrap. 
let it relax now for about half an hour so the gluten relaxes and makes it nice and easy to work with. This has been rested, so time to put it through the pasta machine and make our pasta. Just keep running it through the pasta machine to your desired thickness. I'm just gonna run this through the fettuccine blade. Okay, there we go, there's our pasta. Now let's cook it in some nice salted boiling water. We won't need to cook for too long. All you gotta do is just take it out and have a little taste to see if it's cooked or not. That's an easy way of doing it. Okay, our lamb's been cooked beautifully. It's cooked through for the last couple of hours. All the flavors are infused in it and now it's ready to go. Looking forward to it. The pasta is ready. It's been cooked for about three minutes now. Let's get this served up. Bring out our slow cooks, beautiful. Look at that, it's looking sensational. All the flavors, all the juices all gone through. The pasta also will start to absorb and suck up some of those beautiful meat juices. And there's my winter slow cook with organic spelt pasta. Hope you really enjoy this recipe. Until next time, healthy eating.